people to loose your bands and your chains that you have been afflicted by. And God will use the heathen to elevate you in the time of your elevation and glory and deliverance. He will use human hands to do it. Because when God wants to bless you when you're on the line of the living, he'll use people to bless you. And when Satan wants to curse you, he'll use people to curse you. Why? Because dominion has been given to man upon the land of the living. And no spirit can go across that law. They can't break that law. They need humans to operate. So God placed himself in his own word by saying, have dominion over the earth. This is why God became man. So he can give man dominion in the spirit as well as in the natural. Because we lost that spiritual advantage when we fell in sin. So God had to give it back to us through Yeshua, Jesus Christ. So when he conquered sin by refusing every impulse of iniquity, and then he died with sin, became sin in fact, that's why, that's why he died. He became sin. Everything we do that's messed up and abominable, Jesus became that. That permitted him the ability to die because the wages of sin is death. But because he never personally sinned, he broke the pangs of sin and conquered death by raising from the dead without decay and gave us power spiritually even as we are on the land of the living. So we have dominion in the spirit and in the natural because we are followers of Jesus Christ, the Shua Mashiach. Hallelujah. So, this was a precursor of such a suffering. Joseph, who was placed in prison, and he did not recant from showing forth his gifts, even when he was incarcerated. And right there he interpreted dreams. And these two men that he interpreted these dreams for, one of them was going to die, according to the prophecy that Joseph told him as he interpreted his dream for him. And one, he interpreted, you're going back into Pharaoh's service. And when you do, remember me. You see, because that was his gateway out of prison. His gift made room for him. He was an interpreter of dreams, and he would prophesy by the same. Now, Pharaoh was going to need a man like Joseph. And when he dreamt that nobody could interpret his dreams, that's when the butler, at the right time, remembered the gifted prisoner in Pharaoh's prison. And he said, I know someone that can solve your problem, Pharaoh. And that's when Joseph shone before Pharaoh, interpreting his dreams. And then Pharaoh said, I need you by my side to be the governor of Egypt. Made him the law of the land of Egypt, the most powerful nation on earth. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. Your day can change within 24 hours. You just need to trust in the Lord and, and, and let the Word of God try you and come out like pure gold, like Joseph. This is why you need to praise the Lord, because you don't know what's coming up next tomorrow. Hallelujah. You don't know. Only what God reveals can you know to be your tomorrow. Praise the Lord. You have soothsayers and fortune tellers and all that. They only know so much what Satan plans for certain people. But when you are dealing with the Most High, the all-seeing eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of heaven and earth who knows all things, and his eyes travel to and fro, beholding the evil and the good. And when he already has the future in his hand, because he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And when he reveals to you what's going to happen, and you speak it with the confidence of his anointing, by his word, and it comes to pass, people are going to take note. They're going to know that you have gifts, that you're a favored one, that you are anointed. Because everyone's claiming, at some point everyone, I'm a preacher, I'm this, I'm that. But when you're preaching through the word of God and it comes to pass, people take note, you're anointed to speak the word of God. And you will be held in high regard. Praise the Lord. So you just suffer with him and the Lord will reign you will reign with him God will see to it that you're lifted like Joseph watch this the king sent and loosed him even the ruler of the people and let him go free he made him lord of his house 
and ruler over all his substance, to bind his princes at his pleasure, <laughs> and teach his senators wisdom. The instruction he gave Pharaoh for the coming famine prompted Pharaoh to make him ruler over the land of Egypt and to administer law and order and to oversight the increase that God was giving to Egypt at the time. So that in the land of famine, famine everybody can have sustenance and last throughout the time of trouble. So that's how jo Joseph taught the senators of Pharaoh wisdom. Let's continue, verse 23. Israel also came into Egypt under Joseph, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham, the Hamitic people. And he increased his people greatly, and made them stronger than their enemies. He turned their hearts to hate his people, <laughs> to deal subtly with his servants. Now, did you hear that? This is verse 25. God allowed the Egyptians to turn against God's people. Why? God wanted to make it uncomfortable so that the, his people will not want to stay in Egypt. Are you seeing this? So God allows the enemy to come at us so that we will be reminded that we are pilgrims and sojourners in this land and this is not our final resting place. In fact, Jesus said it like this, A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses. That is not what defines you. What defines you is what you do. You are what you do. <laughs> That's why the Lord said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Because if you do that, then you're my friend. You're a joint heir with me. You're royalty. You're a son of God because you obey the word of God. Keep my commandments. You are what you do. If you walk in obedience to the word of God, you're a son of God. The word of God is in your flesh. Are you hearing this today? Verse 26. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They showed him signs amongst them and wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made it dark, and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chambers of their kings. Even playing fields, when plagues and dilemma sweep the land. He spake, and they came divers sorts of flies and lice in all their coasts. And mind you, nothing happened to the children of Israel. This was happening to the Egyptians. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also and their fig trees and brake the trees of their coasts. He spake and the locusts came and caterpillars and that without number. And did eat up all the herds in their land and devoured the fruit of the, their ground. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. Remember, you reap what you sow. They afflicted the Israelites by killing all the male children two years old and under. So guess what? Eighty years later, the same thing happened to them. Are you hearing me? They reaped it throughout the land of Egypt, not just their children, but their animals too. Not just the animals and the children, but their land was brought down low, their stock market fell. Everything they trusted in was leveled. God destroyed the gods of Egypt, like God is about to do with the inhabitants of the earth. All the things that people trust in and make their God, the object of their effect affections, will not worship God because of these things. God is going to remove such things. They tell me, they say, that the middle class is being wiped out, decimated. Well, guess what? The engineers of society that attempt to do these things to fatten up their goods 
God is just filling them up for the slaughter. You better believe it. Because he's going to execute his judgment and justice upon the land of the living. And who can stop him when he's ready to do this? He alone is God. There is none else. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God. He's the only true and living God. And the heathen will come to know it. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. He brought them, the Israelites, forth also with silver and gold. So they weren't working for nothing. They came up with great substance. The Lord prophesied that 400 years prior to Abraham and said, I'm going to put your people into a strange land. They will be afflicted. But when I judge that nation and afflict them, your children, Abraham, are coming up with great substance. History repeats itself. So, let the powers that be, earthly powers that is, let them do what they want to do. They are sowing the seeds for their own future and that of their offspring. They try to harm God's people. The lion is coming back to deal with them and their offspring. So fret not thyself because of evil doers. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the good desires of your heart. Egypt was glad when they departed. For the fear of them fell upon them. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light in the night. The people asked, and he brought quails and satisfied them with the bread of heaven, manna. No other nation on earth was, had been fed with manna. The children of Israel were fed with angels' food. He opened the rock and waters gushed out. They ran in the dry places like a river. For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. And he brought forth his people with joy and his chosen with gladness. He gave them the lands of the heathen. And they inherited, they inherited the labor of the people. That they might observe his statutes and keep his law. Praise be the Lord. When God has allowed the wicked to amass their treasures. He intends to, for that to be dispersed amongst the just. That's what the word says. So don't worry about it. The wealth of the sinner is laid out for the just. This is Proverbs chapter 30, 13, verse 20. The wealth of the sinner is laid out for the just. Why? Because God's word must come to pass. So, when you look at the faithfulness of the Most High God, in spite of ourselves, because of His love and by His grace we're saved. It's not of ourselves, it's, it's a gift to us. When you look at that, shouldn't you rejoice and be glad? Shouldn't you give God praise every day? We should just take our eyes off of our conditions and look to the heavens wherein he dwells. Look at, the, look at the life that He's given us. Look at the hope He has granted us. We're going to have pleasure forevermore. Shouldn't this be reasons why we should rejoice and be glad? Life on earth is just for, for a moment. Before you know it, we won't be here. We're like vapor. We're here today, gone in a moment. But His mercies on our soul endures forever. And He says, if you give yourself to me, you'll never die. That alone is reason to praise Him, to give Him thanks. He also promises certain blessings that will be on the land of the living, such as Israel will return back to the land of Canaan, back to the place they call Palestine, back to the place that they call Israel, the state of Israel. Yet the United Nations is not going to give Israel back. The King of Glory, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, is going to give His people that. Because he's our king. And he's the king of the church. The church is his bride. So all Jews, Judeans and Gentiles that are born into the kingdom of God 
have the exalted position of being the bride, the queen of such a kingdom. Praise the Lord. Corporately, we are the bride of Jesus Christ. And there's going to be a cry at midnight. We're going to hear, get up and go ye out to meet him. I'm reminded of that parable that Jesus gave. He says the kingdom of heaven is like there's a marriage feast. Right? And there were five, ten virgins, five wise and five foolish. And the, everyone had oil in their, in their lamps. But the five wise had oil in their vessels. They had what, the, what we would call reserves. Because things in life will happen. They all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry. The bridegroom has suddenly arrived. Go ye out to meet him. You see, the ten virgins is the corporate church. Do you see that? That's the corporate church. Ten virgins, these are the people that profess to be following Yeshua, Jesus Christ. But those that keep the Holy Spirit, walk in the Spirit, so that they don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Those that walk according to His Word, they've got reserves. <laughs> Thy Word have I hid in my heart, so that I might not sin against thee. That's reserves. So they heard the cry. Everybody heard the cry. When they got up, they took from their vessels, poured into their lamps, and they lit it, and behold, out of the darkness is light. Don't worry about the darkness. If you've got reserves, you've got something whereby when the time comes, light will be given to you. But the five foolish came to the ones that were wise and said, Give us of your oil so that we can have light. The wise said, No. See, they're wise. No, we're not giving you what we have reserved for such a time as this. You go out and go to them that sell and buy from them. But our time has come. We're going into the bridegroom's wedding feast right now. Alright. By the time the five foolish ones came back, the door was shut. The five wise were inside. And the foolish were outside, crying, let us in. Only to hear, I don't know you. I don't know you. The ones that are prepared, they're the ones that enter. This is why we should rejoice. Because if you're preparing for that cry, you have oil in your vessel and you have some in reserve for when the midnight cry is given. Rejoice. Go about your business. Do what you have to do. But preserve the Word of God in your heart. Live by the Word of God. Walk in the Spirit. And when that cry comes, you will see why your praises and thanksgiving were worth it. You didn't see why at the time, but you praised Him anyway. You took the Word of God by faith and said, It's going to be my life. When that cry occurs, you're going to see why it was worth doing this. It was worth praising Him, even when you didn't feel good. It was worth praising Him for past victories. It was worth praising Him while you were suffering. It was worth praising Him when you didn't understand. It was worth praising Him when you were ostracized. It was worth praising Him, giving thanks unto Him when you were left alone. Because guess what? You realize now, you were not alone. He was always with you, going with you through the flood, through the rivers, through the fire. He was with you when you were feeling down and out. He was with you, carrying you when you couldn't even take another step. And now that the cry comes, and you're in the bridal wedding feast, then you, you now you're known as you were known. Now you see what you were believing. Now your hope has arrived. And then you say, man, it was worth it. I wish I'd have done more. Well, now's your chance. Because he's coming very, very soon. I'm going to leave you with these words. Take no thought of tomorrow. For the morrow will take thought of itself. Sufficient in the day is the evil thereof. So my advice to you is to give God thanks as you seek the Lord and all the benefits of His kingdom and all His righteousness and the things that you need shall be added unto you. Walk by faith, not by sight. Do the best you can while you breathe and you will have eternity to rejoice in His goodness for the choices you've made today. And for those of you who are not saved, I appeal to you, 
the day if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Give yourself unto Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can save you from the predic predicament that is ahead. Because he's already conquered the world. So God bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace that part is all understanding. In the name of Yahushua Mashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen. Shalom.